This little thing in this box has been a source of so many issues with Fox bodies. Today we're gonna to talk about a new problem that I found. So if you've been into the Fox bodies any length of time, or even if you're not into Fox bodies, you've probably still heard about the issues surrounding our TPS sensors here. Now usually that's gonna relate to like a surging idle, uh, something along those lines, and people tell you you need to adjust them, need to set them correctly, and that is all correct. But what I'm gonna talk about today is a new issue that I found with these. I think that this could be the source of some of those problems. So let me explain what I'm talking about. So before we install this, let's move over to the Calypso and I'll show you what I found a problem with. Okay, so this car has a Terminator X in it, which is why I have this handheld. Now that does not matter with the issues that I'm talking about. If your TPS is having the same issue as mine, it's not gonna matter what kind of computer you have and it can happen either way. The issue that we're running into with this car is when you're like cruising down the road and you're at part throttle, right? Uh, the car wants to buck and wants to misfire and just run really rough. But at wide open throttle, it runs great. And under no throttle, like with your foot off the throttle, it runs fine. So, so one day I was driving the car and I was switching through, you know, my different dash views here. And I usually keep it up here on vitals, right? Well, as you can see, it doesn't show TPS here, okay? So I switched over to a different view and now as you can see the TPS is loaded up. So I just so happened to watch the TPS signal as I'm driving down the road and instead of like a steady input, see how it changes to a steady input? It was doing this. It was bouncing all over the place driving down the road. Now, as of right this second, it's not doing it. I did like kind of pull on the wires on the TPS a little bit to try to situate it and make it a little bit better. I don't think I fixed it and it may just be an issue when the car's running. So with that being said, let's go ahead and start it up and see if it matters or not. All right, guys, did you see that? The TPS is reading zero as I give it throttle input. Watch it move and then it goes to nothing. That is not good. For the sake of this video, that should be proof enough. Now, I know you couldn't see my, my foot on the throttle, but trust me, I was giving the car throttle and sometimes it would read and then sometimes it wouldn't. So if you have something like a Holly or anything like that, where you have some type of digital display, you can find that issue pretty easily, right? All you gotta do is look at your screen and you're like, oh, okay, I know that I'm pressing the throttle, but I don't see the numbers changing. Obviously there's a problem somewhere. Now, I don't know why the car does it with it switched off. It could be some type of interference somewhere else along the line. I'm not 100% sure guys, but what we're gonna do and swap out this TPS sensor right now with a new one. And we're gonna see if that fixes the problem. And then we're gonna talk about the fact that this could very well happen on a stock A9L, A9P car, something along those lines. And it would be really hard to tell if it was the issue or not, right? But first off, let's go ahead and get this thing changed out. Okay, so first off, let's talk about how you do this. It's very simple. Obviously you just unplug your TPS and there's two screws here. Now, some of you guys are going to have a plate up here, an adjuster, right? If that's the case, you leave the plate on and you still only take these two screws out. So our TPS is ready to come off. Now, something I want to show you guys and, and explain is the preload on one of these. Now, I don't know if you can see this or not, but in here, there are two tabs. Those tabs catch this blade right here like this you find those tabs and you come in like this and as this thing spins these things in here move the whole inside of this tps can turn 
okay? So as the throttle moves, it moves this, this right here on the inside, which there again is like a potentiometer, I guess. It gives you a different voltage reading. That's how the car knows what throttle position you are in. So what you have to do is be careful to not put this thing on the wrong side. If you try to put it on this side and you pull back, it doesn't go that way. So you can break it, and I've seen that happen before. So you wanna to come to this side of your blade and put a little bit of preload. See right here, I can already feel it moving the TPS. It's gonna install this to that side of the blade, twist it ever so slightly, start your screws and we should be good to go. Now, on this car, considering it now has a uh, holly on it, you don't actually have to do a base idle reset. The computer will go in and read whatever voltage it is and the computer will compensate for it. So. As you can see, these wires are pretty much shot. Look at the green wire. Like there's only a few little wires that are still connected down here. All right, and that's from years of poking and prodding and everything else. More than likely, that's why this thing's jumping all over the place. So let's see if that fixed the problem with the car. We'll go ahead, start it up. Well, actually, first off, we need to do a TPS reset. Okay, so to do the TPS reset, we just go in, go to home, go to wizards, go to TPS auto set. Okay, we got our key switched on. We're gonna press the accelerator pedal twice. Hit next, and it's successful. That's all you have to do on the Holly. Let's go over here and see if this thing's working. Yep, seems to be working good. Let's we'll start the car up and see if that fixed the problem. That fixed the problem. So now the computer knows the exact throttle position on the car and that should fix any rough runnings that we had. So let's talk about how this could also cause the same problem on a car with a stock computer. Well, honestly, it's pretty simple, right? Let's think about it. If I were to take this old TPS that I took off of the Calypso and put it on this car, we're gonna have the same issue, right? So it's gonna run like crap, right? If we put this thing on here, we know that this sensor is bad. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, well, man, you're not telling me anything. When the TPS goes bad, we all know how to replace that, right? This is the issue. If you test this sensor, meaning if you test it by voltage only, it's gonna show up perfect. It's gonna show just what it needs to show you. And you're gonna be like, okay, well, I set the TPS, everything's good. That's not always the case though. If you're having this problem on your car, how are you gonna know that your TPS is jumping around if you have no way of monitoring it, right? Let's do this real quick. Let me show you an option that you guys might have. So I'll pick back up once I get this set up and then we'll talk about it. There's no need in me dragging you guys along for this whole little ride. I'll catch you guys in just a second. You guys better know I love you because I just took my new TPS off, put my old TPS back on because I wanna show you guys something. All right. So this is what I came up with to show you guys that maybe have a stock computer car and you want to test this theory to see if your TPS is jumping all over the place while you're driving the car. So I mean, you're going to have to cannibalize this a little bit, but what I did was obviously just skin the wires back. As you can see on the green wire, that's going to be your positive and your negative wire is going to be your negative. And I just put two alligator clips from Harbor Freight on the end of some wire right here. All right connected it just like that run it across the top of the motor now guys make sure that you secure your wire wherever you need to or whatever the case may be okay but you should just be able to run it across the top of the fender for the time being through your door go ahead shut your door you're not going to hurt anything there that'll secure the wires we're gonna come in and connect this alligator clip to the black lead. 
just like you would if you were testing your TPS on the car, you know, under the hood. And then you're going to come in and do the same thing on this. All I have was a, a big clamp, so whatever. It's all the same, right? So as you can see here, our TPS voltage is 0.725, which is about right. That's typically where I have mine set. Okay. Now watch as I input throttle. You can see that the voltage goes up. Now, what you're seeing on this is just an interpretation of that, and this is showing you percentage. Doesn't matter. What you're looking for here are your numbers to fluctuate. If they're fluctuating on you when you're holding the throttle steady, then your TPS is bad. So what you're gonna wanna do is secure everything up, and it's best if you have a friend with you. Hand them this, and then you drive the car down the road, and at a steady input, hold your foot on the throttle, and then see if this stays steady. I'll put them side by side for you guys so that you can see. See the correlation here? There's 100%, and that's what that looks like in voltage. Now, your voltage is gonna vary depending on how you have your TPS set, but right now it's steady, and that's because the car is off. Remember earlier, guys, it did the same thing. It was steady until we started the car up. So that is a way that you can test your TPS to see if it's jumping all over the place, to see if it's messed up. It's the same concept as what the Holly's doing. It just shows you that number in percentage. Also, uh, you can pick up one of those little multimeters from Harbor Freight for like four bucks or something, right? These TPS sensors are typically 40 to 50 to 60 bucks. Depends on where you get it from. So save yourself some money. If you're curious and you want to know if your TPS is acting right, try that out. Now, I'm not telling you that it's going to be foolproof, right? It's going to be really hard to keep your foot steady. You're not looking for just little incremental differences. You're looking at major differences, right? You should be able to tell. You would attempt something like this if you put new plugs, new wires, new coil, you know, all your injectors are good and you're just like pulling your freaking hair out that going down the road, your car's just got a misfire or it's crazy or sometimes uh, it'll idle up on you really high or sometimes it'll just cut off on you and there's just like this weird like ghost in the system that you can't get out. That's when I would try something like this just to be safe. Now, of course, you can just go out and buy a new TPS and put it on the car. But what if that's not it? That's 50 bucks down the drain. I know that there is somebody out there that is ready to throw in the damn towel with their Fox body. They're ready to just give up on it because they can't trace down this issue. I'm thinking that this might help a lot of people. So go ahead, if you don't mind, share this video. I do appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.